Hi, everybody. I'm sitting here with former Baltimore sergeant and former Marine, correct? That is correct. That was a really smooth intro. Let's do it over. <laughs> Hi, I'm sitting here with former Baltimore sergeant and former Marine, Michael Wood. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hi, Jimmy. It's nice. great to be with you again. It's great to the have you. The intro was smoother. If we don't see it, that previous intro was a mess. But we've, maybe we leave it in now. It's a comedy show. We've been uh, talking about DAPL. With now, before we've had you on the show, you told us all about uh, policing and what we should do. And that uh, a lot of people enjoyed that video and what you had to say. I did, too. I like the idea of we tell the police how to police our community instead of they telling us how they're going to get. I love that idea that we sit down with the police and say, this is how you do it. So that's another video. Check that out. But today we're here because he's going to be going to North Dakota with Wes Clark Jr. And uh, is this an association with the Young Turks? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, sure, they help us out, but no more than you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I did donate. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Jank donated that. We should uh, oh, okay. text him and see how good of a person he truly is after all this. I certainly did donate, and I tweeted it out. And so this is what's happening in uh, North Dakota right now. So let's... Move south on the roadway. Move south. Do not approach... So that's happening in Obama's America. And uh, you're going to go out there and you're going to let them hit you in the head with those sticks. Is that what you're going to do? What are you doing? I mean, if they choose to, I don't think that that's going to be the takeaway when there's a... Um, let's go with a whole hell of a lot more of us than there are of them. So tell, so everybody, if you don't know what's happening in North Dakota, uh, Energy uh, Partner, what, what was the name of the Energy Transfer Partners is the company that's trying to lay a pi pipeline. It's going to go under the Missouri River. It's going to break, and then it's going to pollute that water, and nobody really gives a shit because they want to make money. The only people who do care are the people whose water is going to be affected, which are the natives. And by the way, uh, the way they're doing it, the way they're laying the pipe down, they're doing it illegally, right? So you're supposed to do a big environmental impact study. On how to, they're not. They're doing it. They're getting approval one pipe at a time, right? Which is not how you're supposed to do it. They're also doing things like uh, invading uh, native land that's supposed to be their land by treaty, and they're doing lots of illegal stuff. So oh, when you wait, see wait, the wait, cops- wait. Be their land by treaty? Well, it's their land. It's their land, and we're arguing about whether it's the first time, second time, or third time it has been stolen from them by force. Yeah, that's I know, right. But even if we use what the United States government says, it's their land, right? So that's what I'm talking about. And so when you see videos of North Dakota on CNN or MSNBC or wherever, just keep in mind that the cops are the criminals out there this time. It's not the pr protesters. The cops are protecting the criminals, which is, is the oil company, right? So they're not protecting the citizen or the peaceful people or the people who want law, the law to be followed. They're actually protecting uh, the people who are breaking the law. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is what it is, though. Our conversations from before don't really change much no. with this situation. This is what we decided discussed before that, that police the, serve power they serve power they serve the oligarchy and who's writing the checks and you will find out that american policing as i keep repeating is based on three things and three things only is the creation and maintenance of a slave class the protection of elite and white property and the continued genocide of the native american people you will never see a police department do anything that isn't one or a combination of those three things wow that's pretty heavy duty so you so we've covered it on here the mainstream news media when they do cover it they cover it incorrectly, right? CNN is, they'll, they'll say things like uh, violence erupted at the protest. Uh, the cops say that the viol protesters are hurling grenades at. So we know that the protesters, the water protectors, are not violent. We know that the violence is being initiated by the police. And that what we've talked about many times on this show is that what happens in police culture is either you succumb to the culture, even if, if you're a good person with good intentions who joins the police force, you either succumb to the culture and do what they're doing or you leave. And that's exactly what happened up there. Everybody made a big deal out of those two policemen who said, I don't want to do this and be part of it. And they left and everybody was touting them. And I'm like, no, now the good guys are gone. Now there's only guys up there who are cool with it. And they're going to get replaced with two more people who are cool with it. So he's not cool with it. And what did you decide to do? Wes Clark called me and said, we need to go up there. And I'd been having a lot of discussions in my own house about, oh, we got to go up there. We got to do this. And it was just like, it's North Dakota. And sure, you come up with every excuse of why 
you you don't have to go out there in the cold in your mm-hmm. own mind and get water sprayed on right. you by the cops. And by I the way, think at that conversation it was it was it for us. Like that that's it. We had to go and we had to organize this. And so Wes said, "That's it. We're going to get the veterans. We're going to finally we're going to fulfill what we actually swore to do, which was to protect this country against enemies foreign and domestic. And we were actually going to serve. Like when when military members serve and even cops when they sign up, there's a lot of them are thinking that they can help, and the system is what corrupts them. So a lot of your military members have gone through this the, recently through realizing that the, everything they were sold is a lie. And they went over into the sands, they were trained to kill brown people for oil mm. in the sands, and then you have a lot of cops that come back from that realizing the same thing like I did, that, oh, we have the same domestic policy. I'm also being trained to kill brown people, on, in, in whether it's in Baltimore or it's in North Dakota, for one of those three things. It's either the the creation and maintenance of a slave class, the protection of white and elite property, or the continued genocide of Native American people. This is it. It isn't just policing. This is us. This is our society. That's why we created our police to be that way. So everything you see is going to derive from those three things, concentrating the wealth with the, with the oligarchy. So in this pipeline now, the way you're saying it, the pipeline's actually been completed pretty much. So there isn't even job creation at right. this point. 40 permanent jobs are going to be yeah. created by that pipeline. You're, 40. You're taking away all the jobs from the truck drivers who were driving it across the country safely. You are now invading on land that's not yours, trying to argue whether it's the first, second, or third time you have stolen the land in colonization. And now, with that pipeline being there, this is clear. You are serving those few people that make the profits off of that oil flowing at the expense of the entire country. And the, we can pretty up state-sanctioned violence in a uniform and a badge, but they, are, they, they cannot be more clear that what they are doing now is being an enforcement wing for a few rich people, and they have no fucking honor showing up on that line and doing it. And that's part of the reason why we're there, is because this is so clear. And then when they see vets in front of, of them, thousands of vets that are willing to be the ones that they have to abuse when a lot of them are vets too if this isn't the line that makes it clear for america and for them then i I can't imagine where the line is so you think you think it will make a difference you think that they will care it doesn't seem that they care like the cops that are out there doing the stuff they're doing right now tell me what do you think is going through their minds I, i you're a you know, you're an expert in this. You're a former policeman, a former sergeant. So I don't, you know, I, I grew up with cops. My dad's a cop, my grandpa, my oldest brother, a lot of my best friends are cops. Everybody in my neighborhood was either a cop or a criminal or both. And so I know cops. I think I know what they think and say, but I would like to hear from you. What do you think is going through their minds? It's cold, and they don't want to be out there. They don't want to be out there? No, of course not. They don't want to be out there. Nobody wants to be out there in the cold. So maybe one of the reasons why they're more aggressive is you have the ones that want to be aggressive, of course. And this is a great opportunity, especially if this is like a volunteer thing. Um, You volunteer for a a lot of these uh, more aggressive roles in policing are almost entirely voluntary and then select it from the most volunteering Uh, of the voluntary. No kidding. So So you think a lot of those guys out there on the line volunteered for this? Or, or some of them? Or yeah. What, what would you consider the percentage? I mean, you're going to have a, a good amount of them that are that don't, let's say they don't volunteer, but they don't complain. Uh, okay. Whereas everyone else is going to be like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I hear you. So I, I think they don't want the cold. You can be a little bit more aggressive because you're mad and they blame those people for being the reason why they're out in the cold and they have to travel away from their family. So it, it's it's what we generally do as people. You know, we punch down. So, that, so they blame down, not realizing they're being manipulated by everybody that's above them and I something that's from you that I steal all the time is you know I, I, I'll attribute your, your accreditation whenever I can but whenever you, you are punching down rest assured you're being manipulated by somebody that's more powerful than you yeah so if you ever find yourself being angry at someone lower on the economic ladder than you pretty good chance you're being manipulated by someone higher on that ladder than you so and that's what's happening to those cops you think so yeah I think there's in a sense a lot of them are being manipulated um, or they're they're all being manipulated uh, but I think a lot of them are willing participants in that manipulation. And so you're going to go out there, and you think you and Wes Clark Jr. and the veterans, the Tulsi Gabbard, I heard, is going out there, too. Did you hear about that? Well, there's a lot of people that are coming that we haven't announced yet that we're keeping a little uh, oh, low-key on. Keep that? No, no, no. Tulsi's in the open. But oh, okay. there are other people that are coming that are big celebrities that are vets and and going to help bring more attention to it. But one Is of the Jesse th- Ventura going to be there? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm securing the parameter. 
He might be there. Ah, <laughs> I think I'm gonna go. I got. I want to meet Jesse again. So, um, but we have to remember with all any of the celebrities that are coming, the primary point of this mission is to support those people and to actually serve. So we have a bunch of different motivations and people coming from all over the country for those motivations. But it doesn't matter that you are a celebrity. I'm not even the face of this anymore. We have uh, Laurel Blackshaw is our our face. She's a Native American female veteran, and that's who's doing most of this. The only reason I'm talking a lot is because she just got on the ground up there, and I have to do the media in the back here, but that's the face of our organization. Wes and I are the are the structure and the ones that are trying to put everything together to do it, but this is a support mission, and if the, if the Sioux Tribe wants us to pack up a camp and move it to a different location, then that's what we're going to do. If they want us to stand in front of them and push through the line, that's what we're going to do. My, my heart is burning to go across cross that bridge and make them get out of our way and to shut the whole thing down right now. And if that's what they tell me to do, then you're going to see the, so, the the commander of this operation get a big fat smile on his face and say, who's coming with me? But I think, I think we're going to have uh, productive negotiations before then, really.